This is the day that God is making. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to worship. Welcome to worship in person and welcome also to those worshiping via live stream. A special welcome to any who have not worshiped at Good Shepherd ever or for a while. We've been expecting you because we are always expecting one another the people of God on the journey of faith and life. Today our worship service is a song fest of hymns for organ and God's people. You may know that we've been worshiping outside since the third Sunday of June and we had planned to be outside through the end of September. So we expected today to be our Sunday our first Sunday for a while, to be reunited with the pipe organ, making it a particularly good time to sing some hymns that are especially enhanced with organ. And a day to sing a few more hymns than usual. A day for singing our praise of God, as well as gathering around the gospel spoken in this time of worshiping together. And we give special thanks this morning to Daniel Boshi, who played the violin for the prelude. Daniel, we give great thanks for you, and we apologize that your name was inadvertently, where is he? I'm looking around. Where did he go? Oh, there he is. <laughs> that your name was inadvertently left out of the worship booklet. Thanks be to God for your beautiful music. And as we have the gift of gathering in person in the midst of these extraordinary days, we thank you for sharing in our COVID care practices this morning. We ask that you wear your mask during worship. We are invited to sing with our masks on. Following worship, we have a request that you keep your masks on for conversation. In our use of masks, we continue to practice care and love for one another and for those who cannot be vaccinated, children, and those with special health conditions. 
Today is a fitting occasion, as is every day, to acknowledge that this land is the traditional territory of the Squaxin Island tribe and the Nisqually tribe. Their presence is imbued in the lands and waters surrounding us. And so we gather as we live our lives in the name of the triune God, Trinity of love, who is before us, in us, and beyond us, who is wisdom, word, and breath of life, who is the creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The gathering hymn is God is Here. This hymn and all of our hymns today are printed in the worship booklet. I invite you to stand as you are able. <laughs> Sweet. 
grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. Form us for life that is faithful and steadfast, and teach us to trust like little children, that we may reflect the image of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us join in singing one verse of the hymn, Let the Whole Creation Cry. Well, I'd like to invite us all into that spirit of being as little children and receiving little children that Jesus shows us, invites us to. Now, when I was a little child, one of the things that I enjoyed doing with my brother and my father was playing catch. Anyone here ever like to play catch? Okay, okay. Playing catch. So we would play catch with a football. We would play catch with, well, it was more like dodgeball. That's a little different than playing catch, isn't it? But what we really liked was playing catch with a baseball. And I don't know how many hours we spent out there on the grass playing catch or maybe uh, against a wall, throwing a baseball or a tennis ball against the wall. It was just fun. It was just a lot of fun to do that. But it was also a way of practicing. It was a lot better than standing out in right field where maybe once every 15 minutes a ball would come out your way um, in little league practice. Because you caught a ball, and then you caught the ball, and you'd pick it up and you'd throw it, and you'd catch it again, you got pretty good at catching, or maybe to use another word, another word, what's, what's catching like? When we catch something, what are, what's that like? Could someone help me with another word for what you do when you catch a ball? We receive it. We receive it. It's something we do with our hands and our, our whole person. We are practicing receiving the ball. And sometimes when you play catch, at least when we would play catch, we'd wind it up and really, really, really see if we could get the other person maybe to not catch it. Maybe some of you have done that. But it was also a good chance to practice throwing the ball so other people could catch it. And catching or receiving really carefully really gently, almost like you just kind of let that fast ball just, just softly come into your hands and welcome it into your hands. Receiving takes practice. Receiving takes practice. Now for a minute, let's imagine that we're playing catch with God. And it takes some practice. 
Maybe sometimes God seems like a, a fastball or a curveball or a slider or a knuckleball. But God wants, God wants us to receive God's presence for us. God wants us to receive God. And that takes some practice. It's something we can do every day. So talking with one of you reminded me it's something we can do every moment. Now, we can play catch with God. But what about taking that and let's imagine it another step. Imagine all the joy and the carefulness and the love that would go into playing catch with God. And hey, maybe even the fun at times. I think so. And imagine practicing receiving other people that way. It takes practice. We'll always have a challenge before us. But that's something God wants us to do too. To receive one another, people we think we know, and people we think we don't know, ever more gently. Receive them. Receive them just like they were God. Receive them. The first reading comes from the book of Hebrews. In many ways, many and various ways, God spoke of old to our forebears by the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us by the Son, whom God appointed the heir of all things, and through whom God also created the world. This Son reflects the glory of God and bears the very stamp of God's nature, upholding the universe by a word of power. The Son, having made purification for sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name the Son has obtained and more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor of the suffering of death so that by the grace of God he may taste death, taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God for whom and through whom all things exist in bringing many children to glory should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Holy wisdom, holy word.
the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them, male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But Jesus saw this. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. He took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. There are many ways. Okay, I'm not going to sing Mr. Rogers right now. There are many (laughs) ways. There are many ways. That God speaks. There are many ways to hear how God has spoken, and there are many ways to hear how God is speaking. We can pay attention, we can listen to the whole creation and to the scriptures and to Our minds, the gift of our whole minds. We can listen in silence and in song. We can listen in prayer and in genuine community. And we can listen to compassionate acts that that call us or surround us. God has spoken. God has spoken. God has spoken to our ancestors. God has spoken to our recent forebears. And God has even spoken to this generation or set of generations. God speaks in body. God speaks in mind. God speaks to our spirit and heart And God speaks in our true-hearted longings, those, those promptings, those stirrings that lead us to approach God. God still speaks. God has spoken and God still speaks in all of those many ways. And God has spoken and God still speaks in Jesus Christ. 
here, now, in our time, this secular age we live in, to those near to us and those further from us, in space or time or emotion or way of life, God has spoken and is speaking to many people, to all people, and even to those we find it difficult to receive. Jesus speaks to us. Jesus speaks to them and to us. Jesus speaks by showing us how to receive others, to receive their true-hearted longings for God. Jesus speaks to us by showing us how to receive our true-hearted longings for God, for God in our midst. Today we begin hearing from the letter to the Hebrews which in some ways is a meditation on how it is and why it is Jesus can speak to us, humans as we are, creatures on earth. And one way to summarize the letter to the Hebrews, maybe a way in, is to say it is especially worth paying attention. It is especially worth paying attention to how God speaks to us in Jesus. It is especially worth paying attention now in this attention economy that we have to endure. Put aside your news feed, the stream of images curated just for you, just for me, just for what you want to... Amidst all that, it is especially worth paying attention to how God speaks to us. The letter to the Hebrews would point out to us that Jesus is able to speak to us. In a way that an angel cannot. An angel can aid us, an angel can prompt us, an angel can make sure that matter holds together and that, you know, just the laws of physics. Anyway, but we won't get into that. But Jesus can speak to us in a way that, say, an angel cannot because Jesus is involved in the ongoing sufferings and generativity of the creation alongside humankind. Jesus is with us and with all humankind in having tasted, tasted loss and weakness, abandonment, estrangement, having tasted death, and all those things in which our longings for love and union grow grievous and out of our reach. But Jesus has not only tasted these things. Jesus has tasted life. Jesus has tasted the life of God's life, longing for us, longing to receive us longing to be with us. Jesus has tasted death, but Jesus has tasted the fullness and the truth of the life that God has for us, and Jesus shows us the way. The letter of the Hebrews would remind us, Jesus is worth paying attention to. And how? How is it that this Jesus speaks to us? Well, 
looking at the gospel text for today, we might say it's more in how he says what he says than in what he says. It's more in the how. It's more in what Jesus models. Once, twice, a third time in this gospel, uh, we encounter Jesus teaching in deed and in word, in receiving the questions and the response of those who approach him. Pharisees, disciples, people and the children in their care. And today, I'm inviting us all to turn our attention especially to this instance where the people and the children in their care approach Jesus. I wonder who they were. I wonder who they were. These people approach Jesus and the disciples, bringing their children, that Jesus might touch them, lay hands on them. Something in these people, something true-hearted, longed in them, led them to approach what they sensed as a as a life, as a, as a source of blessing in Jesus or in the midst of this person. They longed to approach. And the disciples, well, they tried to drive them away. Maybe the disciples were just feeling a little bit extra limited that day uh, in... in uh, how much time or energy they had. Maybe they were feeling a little limited by their own sense of fear or just plain hurry. Jesus, we've got a tight schedule here. We've got to get on to the next engagement here. Come on now. Or maybe they saw the families and households from that particular neighborhood where they were staying and living and teaching and learning. The families and households who had a bad rumor about them, that family that's always yelling, those children who rudely disrupt, who don't know their manners, who say things that they shouldn't to good and proper adults. A family they just didn't know how to receive in the wonder and the care that comes with gratitude. Let the children come to me. Don't stop them. Don't stop them. Two weeks now, we have heard Jesus firmly Return the disciples' attention with these words. Don't stop them. To the true-hearted impulses of body, mind, and spirit in those around them who approach and desire to walk in Jesus' midst. Don't stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs, says Jesus. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The disciples were given the gift to see this. To let their hearts see this. The letter to the Hebrews says, we do see this. We do see Jesus. The disciples see Jesus receiving the child, 
perhaps the child that they feared to receive, were unsure how, or had tried to receive, and you know, it was a little awkward. What a gift to receive these children. To receive them. To receive those who care for them. To receive these children in ourselves. The presence of God's life. The real taste of life. The life of God's longing to receive us. The disciples were given the gift to see this. To see this in Jesus. The life of God's longing to receive us has spoken in many ways. And even now, this life of God is present and works and speaks and can be seen by us and for us and in us and in our midst. You and I, we approach Jesus with a true-hearted longing for God. People we don't know, children of all ages, adults of all ages, approach Jesus in our midst. And we who practice living in Christian community and congregational life need to be reminded of this. That all of us, those we think we know and those we think we don't know, are approaching Jesus Approaching God who longs for us. Approaching them in our midst. It's one very essential reason why paying attention to and practicing how we receive others, especially little children, is so important. So, we practice listening to others, to God, listening to ourselves in ways maybe we haven't listened to ourselves before. We practice greeting and welcoming. We practice compassion and understanding. We practice making room in our calendar, in our commitments, in our holy space and holy time. And we practice making room in our hearts and in our relationships for these little ones who approach. And we're not alone in this practice. We're not alone. God speaks to us. God longs to show us how to receive those to whom this life of God belongs. God longs to show us how to make room for their needs, for their longings, for their challenges, and for their gifts. This is a way to let them come to Jesus and to know better the blessing that he offers all God's children.
Let us join together in professing our Christian faith using the words of the Affirmation of Faith printed in the worship booklet. I invite you to stand as you are able. We believe in one God, maker of heaven and earth, who is goodness created in us and by grace sustains us. We believe in Jesus Christ, beloved child of God, who became a human being and lived among us, experiencing fully the joys, sorrows, and temptations of human life. While he walked the earth, he taught and healed, but most of all, he loved and showed us how to love one another. By us and for us, he was crucified. He died and was buried, yet he rose again and lives on, freeing us and empowering us to be children of God. We believe in the Holy Spirit, powered out upon the disciples on the day of Pentecost, and upon us in our baptisms. The Spirit has spoken through the prophets, continues still to speak through us today, and joins us together in the body of Christ, yearning within us to pray for those things too deep for words, nourishing us in faith, and bringing us to the wholeness of life everlasting. Amen. Not always an easy peace, never an insignificant peace or a half-hearted peace. But the peace of Christ that opens our hearts to all hearts is with us now. May that peace of Christ be with you always. Let us take time to look around to consider that each one you see is made in the image of God and then share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. I invite you to be seated for a few announcements about life together. First, a special word, a daily and weekly word, a clear word, welcome. Welcome into this Good Shepherd community of faith and life. In the pews, you can find welcome cards that we invite you to fill out if you'd like to share a prayer concern or if you're newer to Good Shepherd and want to share a bit about yourself or to sign up to receive church communications. These cards can be placed at the offering, at the welcome tables after worship or given to an usher. Following worship today, you are invited to Prairie Hall, which is the big room just on the other side of the Narthex entry area. And there you're invited into informal conversation circles of fellowship and hospitality. While we are choosing not to have coffee or treats after worship, because that means our masks come off inside, we are nevertheless eager to get acquainted and reacquainted, to weave relationships, and to share joys and challenges of the past week. So we invite you following worship to make your way into that space. And then at 10 a.m., I invite you back into the sanctuary for a 40-minute forum that I'm leading today. The title is Liminality and Anticipation, Faithful Journeying from Past to Future. I, I see a head shaking. I'm going to tell you all about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe that you can come to the forum and still get in on lots of sports today. <laughs> I believe. I've seen those signs. A few other things for all of us. We continue to invite your donations for the new hymnals that the ELCA has published. It's actually the rest of our red hymnal. The hymn numbers continue where the red hymnal ended starting with 901 and go all the way to 1100. Your messages of thanksgiving or in honor or in memory of someone are needed in these new hymnals. 
to personalize these books as part of the living ministry of Good Shepherd. Thank you for helping us welcome this next chapter of Lutheran resources into our pews. And we invite you to mark your calendars now for the Good Shepherd Pumpkin Palooza Arts Walk and Apple Cider Pressing and Pizza, a gathering of the whole congregation outside on Saturday afternoon, October 23rd. The details are in today's worship booklet. This morning, one of the ways we worship God is with our financial gifts as we share of our God-given blessings in the offering. Thank you for the ways you give generously to support the ministry and mission of this congregation. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. May our generosity be a sign of our deep gratitude and our commitment to sharing in your purposes in the world. In hope and faith, amen. And now, let us join together in praying in the spirit of Jesus, this adapted version of the Lord's Prayer. Oh, wait. Where's the people? Sorry. (laughs) 
made, chil made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need, responding to each petition with the words, hear our prayer. You have established a diverse and beautiful creation. We thank you for the beauty and peace that abounded in our cathedral in the trees this summer. We thank you also for the rains that have brought relief to our state's drought status, revive declining species, and preserve endangered lands, cultivate in us a sense of wonder for the world you created. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You desire for us not to be alone and to live with one another. Strengthen relationships between children and elders, spouses and loved ones, nations and peoples, that we celebrate and support one human family. We pray for all those who are involved with the immigration crisis on our southern border. May your strength and mercy rest upon migrants, refugees, border patrol officers, and those who process immigration papers. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You share in our experiences and struggles. Bless all who live with any mental or physical disability. Inspire creative communities, spaces and environments that are accessible and hospitable. Receive our prayers, especially for Mary Speccaratelli and family, Karen and Dale Hammerer, Daryl Frazier, Beverly Knutson, Maureen Rasa, Cora and family, Angela Hanscombe, Nadine and Tom Walker, Hannah, Judd, Audrey, Emma, Blaine Clark and family, Susie, Marjorie, Sharon, June, Lorraine, Oma, Max, Madison, Jane, Jane M, Ron and Peggy and family, Carol and Bert and family, and David and family. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have established and nurtured relationships that extend beyond those gathered here today. Bless members who can no longer travel to worship with us and remind us of their continued role in this community of faith. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And now, let us join together in praying in the spirit of Jesus, this adapted version of the Lord's Prayer. I invite you to stand as able. Life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us from trials too great to endure. Spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen.
now go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil, but strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Care for the children, the elders, and the whole creation. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may that spirit so fill you this day that you go forth from this place challenged by and grateful for the openness that Jesus shows to all of God's children, even to us. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending him is go my children with my blessing. in peace following the way of Jesus. Thanks be to God. God.